Good morning, class. Today is June 1st, Monday, June 1st. It's, it's June, so uh, we only have a few more weeks of school left. Um, congratulations, you've made it this far. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about long-term negative effects. All right, long-term negative effects effects and basically what that means is these are or negative effects of pollution okay and uh, what this means is long-term negative effects is is that it, it's long term it's it's something that you know you don't see when you know right away uh, if if you are to throw a piece of garbage or can out the window of your car as it's going by uh, 50 miles per hour you know th that's a short-term negative effect you see the can actually on the side of the road, you see it in the grass, you see it in the pond or the lake or wherever it is. That that's that's short term. You see it right now. Long term is when you see things years and years down the road, and we're starting to see these two long term negative effects uh, from things that happened in the United States, you know, 200 years ago or 150 years ago or even 50 years ago. So basically, what our great great grandparents did, uh, you know, back in the day, we are starting to see those effects today all right and one of those is acid rain okay so most of you guys have heard about you know acid rain it's actually acid precipitation i should say not acid rain but acid precipitation because it's not only rain it's rain snow sleet or hail all right now what happens uh, to, why is this this uh, rain snow sleet or hail so important well it comes down from the clouds with a low ph level of zero to five all right, we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, you know, in, in the future. But um, what this means is, is if it has a low pH of, of level of zero to five, then this precipitation is very high in acid level. Okay, now if it's high in acid level, it can contaminate water sources um, such as ponds, lakes, and streams. All right, so, uh, um, you know, normal, uh, the normal pH, the normal pH of rain is about six, six, six and a half. Okay, so this is this is well under. This has to go below five. So if it goes five or below, then it becomes considered acid precipitation. All right. So how does this occur? Well, there's a few different. There's a few steps. All right. First of all, you have ex, you know you have pollution. You have air pollution. Air pollution. Okay. It starts off with air pollution. All right. Now where's the air pollution come from? Well, it comes from cars, factory smoke, volcanoes, burning fossil fuels, or any other type of air pollutant. And where does it go? It goes into the clouds. So there's step one. All right, all these pollutants go into the clouds. They go up, they rise into the atmosphere, they rise up into the air. Number two, the second part of this, is that while that's happening, clean water is also being evaporated into the clouds. So now you have clean water also being evaporated and guess what those two do? They meet up. All right. So the air pollutants mix together with all the clean evaporated water and of course you can imagine what happens. The pollutants mix with the clean evaporated water in the clouds. This contaminates the water vapor. And so now, all of a sudden, you have this clean evaporated water that's now been contaminated. And yes, you said it. It gets very upset and it becomes polluted. So now you have this polluted uh, water vapor. And guess what? That water vapor is going to condense and come down in the form of rain, snow, sleet, or hail. But it's not just normal water or normal snow or normal sleet or normal hail. It is now contaminated. Hail, snow, sleet, or rain. All right. And as it says right here, the polluted water falls from the clouds as acid rain, snow, sleet, or hail. It lands in in oceans, it kills fish, it kills other aquatic life, right? It contaminates drinking water, and this begins this cycle. Now, now that the water cycle is contaminated, this just it, it just continues to go on a contaminated water cycle 
you know, and, until we clean it up. All right, so this, these are the four steps on how acid rain falls. The pollutants mix with clean water vapor and they fall down as acid rain, snow, sleet, or hail. All right, so this is one of the long-term negative effects of pollution. The other long-term negative effect of pollution is what is called global warming. And I know you guys have all heard of global warming. Global warming. You guys are going to see a video on this tomorrow, but this is, oops, all right, this is another long-term negative effect. We are starting to see the Earth become a little bit warmer every single year, and this is things that people have been doing because of pollutants that people have been putting in the air for the last 50 to 100 to 200 years. All right, so why does global warming occur? All right, well, first I want to explain to you how a greenhouse effect occurs because it's just like this, it's, it's, it's called a greenhouse effect that causes the global warming. So what is global warming and how does it occur? So let's start off. It says many scientists believe that the Earth's average global temperatures are heating up each year due to harmful pollutants in the clouds that create a greenhouse effect. Now, guys, this isn't, you know, it's, it's not heating up, you know, like 10 degrees every year. It's heating up maybe like plus maybe 0.1 of a degree one year. And then maybe the next year it's going up 0.2 degrees. And maybe one year it goes up one whole degree. It's very, very, very slow process. But if you look at the average global temperatures of the Earth in the last 20 years, you can see that every year they're going up a little bit more every single year. So how does this occur? Because it works, the earth works like a greenhouse. How does the greenhouse work? Well, a greenhouse traps the sun's heat by using special heat trapping glass. The sun's heat rays can get in, but they can't get out, and so it stays warm all the time. How does this, so looking at this picture, the sun's light and heat come into the greenhouse, it bounces around the greenhouse, but because of the special glass, the heat can't get out and it stays warm even in the wintertime. So that glass lets it in, lets the heat in, but does not let it out. Well, this is now occurring on the earth. The earth is working like a greenhouse, but the Earth doesn't have glass, heat trapping glass all around it like a greenhouse does. Instead, the heat trapping glass is actually pollution. So, I'll read you the next part. So how does this occur on Earth? We'll do orange. The greenhouse on Earth works very similar to that of the actual greenhouse, but instead of heat trapping glass, the Earth is surrounded by dark, harmful pollution gases in its atmosphere. These harmful gases allow the sun's rays to come into the earth, but they trap it. This slowly heats up the earth, causing global warming. Now, let me just show you how this works in, with a picture. We'll do it in black. In a unpolluted earth, this is what normally happens. The sun's rays come in, they hit the earth, they bounce around a little bit, they heat the earth up, and then they say, all right, I'm out of here, and they go back up, and they bounce out into outer space. This is what normally happens. Sun's light comes in, heats it up, and then leaves. It does its duty for the day, and then it leaves. However, in a polluted Earth, thick pollution gases, it's not gonna work, there we go. thick pollution, begins to cover the atmosphere. All those air pollutants, all of those fa the factory smoke, all of the car exhaust, lawnmower exhaust, whatever it may be. And so now what happens is the sun's light comes in like it normally does, and it bounces around, and it heats the earth up, and then when it goes to, to leave, uh-oh, it can't leave. So what does it do? It bounces back onto the earth, heating the earth more. And it tries to leave again, oh, but it can't leave because it's trapped inside by all of that harmful pollution gases. It's almost like when you go to the mall on a hot sunny day and you close the doors and you come back and, it's, and, and 
it's while it's hot outside the inside of the car is even hotter than the outside and that's because the car has trapped in all that extra heat all right that's what's happening to the earth and every single year it's heating up a little bit more a little bit more and it's causing a long-term negative effect of global warming okay. so now that you guys know what the two negative long-term negative effects of acid rain and global warming are i'd like for you to please answer your questions of the day that's going to be your exit card thank you very much i will mark it and have a great day see you tomorrow